Wonder part five. As soon as we had walked at least half a block from the school, mum said, so, how did it go? Did you like it? Not yet, mum. When we get home, I said. The moment we got inside the house, I ran to my room and threw myself onto my bed. I could tell mum didn't know what was up, and I guess I really didn't either. I felt very sad and a tiny bit happy at the exact same time, kind of like that laughing, crying feeling all over again. My dog Daisy followed me into the room, jumped up on the bed and started licking me all over my face. Who's a good girlie? I said in my dad's voice. Who's a good girlie? Is everything okay, sweetness? Mum said. She wanted to sit down beside me, but Daisy was hogging the bed. Uh, excuse me, Daisy, she said, nudging Daisy Ovi. Were those kids not nice, Yorgi? Oh no, I said, only half lying. They were okay. But were they nice? Mr Tushman went out of his way to tell me what sweet kids they are. Uh-huh. I nodded, but I kept looking at Daisy, kissing her on the nose and rubbing her ear until the back leg did that little flea scratch shake. That joy Julian seemed especially nice, Mum said. Oh no, he was the least nice. I like Jack though. He was nice. I thought his name was Jack Will, but it's just Jack. Wait, maybe I'm getting him confused. Which one was the one with dark hair that was brushed forward? Julian. And he wasn't nice. No, not nice. Oh. She thought about this for a second. Okay. So is he the kind of kids who's one way in front of grown-ups and another in front of kids? Yeah, I guess. Nah, no, hate those. She answered, nodding. He was like, so, August, what's the deal with your face? I said, looking at Daisy the whole time. Were you in a fire or something? Mum didn't say anything. When I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. He didn't say it in a mean way, I said quickly. He was just asking. Mum nodded. But I really like Jack, I said. He was like, shut up, Julian. And Charlotte was like, you're so rude, Julian. Mum nodded again. She pressed her fingers on the forehead like she was pushing against a headache. I'm so sorry, Augie, she said quietly. Her cheeks went bright red. No, it's okay, Mum. You don't have to go to school if you don't want to, sweetie. No, I want to, I said. Augie, really, Mum, I want to. And I wasn't lying. Okay, so I admit that the first day at school, I was so nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Mum and Dad were probably a little nervous too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Via before we left the house since it was the Via's first day of school too. Up until a few days before, we still weren't sure I would be going to school at all. After my tour of the school, Mum and Dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mum was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and Dad was saying I should go. Dad had told me how, really, how he was really proud of how I'd handled myself with Julian, and that was turning into quite the strong man. And I heard him tell Mum that he now thought she'd been right all along. But Mum, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When Dad told her that he and Via wanted to talk to me to school today, uh, take, when Dad told her that he and Via wanted to walk me to school today too, since it was on the way to the subway station, Mum seemed relieved that we would all be going together. And I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep is just a few blocks from our house, I've only been on the block a couple of times before. In general, I try to avoid blocks where there are lots of kids roaming around. On our block, everyone knows me and I know everyone. I know every brick and every tree trunk, every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mrs Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting by a window, and the old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the corner where mum gets our bagels and the waitresses at the coffee shop who will call me honey and give me lollipops whenever they see me. I love my neighbourhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be working down these blocks, feeling like it was all new to me suddenly. Amersfoort Avenue, a street I've been down a million times, looked totally different for some reason. Full of people I never saw before, waiting for buses, pushing strollers. We crossed Amersfoort and turned up Heights Place. Via walked next to me like she usually does and Mum and Dad were behind us. As soon as we turned the corner, we saw all the kids in front of the school. Hundreds of them talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents, who were talking with other parents. I kept my head way down. Everyone's just as nervous as you are, said Via in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day of school, OK? Mr Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far, nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once did I look up to see some girls looking my way and whispering with their hands cupped over their mouths. But they looked away when they saw me notice them. We reached the front entrance. OK, so this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hands on top of my shoulders. Have a great first day. I love you, said Via, giving me a big kiss and a hug. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye. Then Mum hugged me, but I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me. So I just gave her a fast, hard hug, turned and disappeared into school. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. 
Now I was glad I'd gone on that little tour because I knew exactly where to go and didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the kids were sitting at, started sitting at different desks. The desks were in half a circle facing the chalkboard, so I chose the desk in the middle towards the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desks started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times, someone was about to sit next to me and then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey, August. It was Charlotte giving me her little wave as she sat down at the desk in front of the class. Why anyone would ever choose to sit way up front in the class, I don't know. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack. Hey, what's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it kind of felt uncool. OK, kids. OK, everyone, settle down, said the teacher now facing us. She had written her name, Ms. Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everybody find a seat, please. Come in, she said to a couple of kids who had just walked into the room. There's a seat there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking and, she noticed me, put your backpacks down and quiet down. She only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell the moment she saw me, like I said, I'm used to it by now. I'm going to take attendance and do the seating chart. She continued sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should not try to open until I tell you to. Your locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside the class, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot switch lockers and you can't switch locks. Then, if there's time at the end of this period, we're all going to get to know each other a little bit better. OK? OK. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out aloud. OK, so, Julian Albans, she said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here, at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on a seating chart. She picked up the very first folder and held it out to him. Come pick it up, she said. Kind of no nonsense. He got up and cut it from her. Zamina Chin. She handed a folder to each kid as she read off the names. As she went down the list, I noticed the seat next to me was the only one still empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, the big kid named Harry Joplin, who already looked like a teenager, she said, Harry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you take that seat, OK? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Harry, I could tell Henry, sorry, didn't want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it was like a wall between us, his desk and mine. Maya Markovitz, Ms. Potoso was saying, here, said a girl about four desks in front of me. Miles Nori, here, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin. As he walked back to his class, I saw him short shoot Henry a poor you look. August Pullman, said Ms. Potosa. Yeah. I said quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into my back for a few seconds. I stood in the front of the class and everybody looked down when I walked back to, the, my, back to my desk. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it, because she'd specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway because I'm used to them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock but he couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and kind of cursing under his breath. Miss Potosa called out the next names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, OK, so everybody write your combinations down somewhere safe that you won't forget, OK? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester, Miss Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now... Go ahead, take your locks out of your folders and spend a couple of minutes practising how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meanwhile, I'll tell you guys a little about something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little bit about yourselves. And we'll, um, well, get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Miss Garcia's smile, but a normal smile like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she'd look like Mrs. Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. But in fact, she looked like Big uh, Mon Mothma from Star Wars Episode 5, Episode 4. 
haircut kind of like a boy's and a big white shirt kind of like a tunic. She turned around and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock to open and was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one. He got really annoyed when I was over to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put the backpack up between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him.